Why is contemporary art so often indistinguishable from the ordinary? In other words, why does so much of it seem so boring to so many people, even educated, thoughtful people? When I'm referring to contemporary art, generally I'm referring to luxury items for wealthy people. And I don't mean that in a cynical way. Obviously, art is and can be much more than that. Rather, this basic definition is a common denomination of what different forms of contemporary art can reduce to. They can reduce to their commodity form, how they are exchanged. Their commodity character unites them with our system of value. Art can be used for many different purposes as an enhancement of other things with a utilitarian purpose, the, the way things are designed. It, art could be used in the form of advertisements, it could be used um, to make a political statement, but when it is only itself, it is useless. When art is an end in itself, then we evaluate it entirely on the grounds of it being a work of art. We don't have to pass judgment on the political element to it, we don't have to assess how well it promotes a product, we simply look, feel, and evaluate it as an end in itself. This sense of purity is what we aim at when we attempt to define our own taste. It is also what the artist aims at as an ideal condition and motive to make his or her work. One problem which emerges here is that we could look at anything as an end in itself. Anything and everything can be and is fascinating. You could stare at a doorknob with complete fascination. The definition of art has been opened wide enough to incorporate the entire sordid world of objects and debris into its own definition. Anything can be placed in the context in which it will be evaluated as an end in itself. Therefore, the art context is what differentiates the ordinary world around us from the extraordinary world of art objects. So let's dive a bit deeper into this. There are a lot of examples of art that, in different ways, tests this boundary between the ordinary world of objects and the sanctified work of art. Pop art tested this. Andy Warhol's Campbell's Soup Can. And, even more, and an even more literal example uh, might be Tracy Emin's Unmade Bed. This is a, a work that, that's simply titled My Bed. And it was just her messy bed and room um, recreated in a gallery. There are other examples of ready-made objects which are brought into the art context. I did a whole video on Joseph Kosuth and his chair piece. Essentially, he put a chair in a gallery with a definition written on one side, the definition of a chair written on one side, and a photographic image of that same chair on the other side. Um, by bringing it into the art context, it transformed it into an art object. Jeff Koons um, would do this with different products. He would put different pr products in a vitrine. Um, one of his more famous pieces is a, a set of vacuum cleaners. Uh, there's also Damien Hirst's Ashtray. This is a piece titled Home Sweet Home. This art object was an ashtray complete with used cigarettes and it was actually thrown out by a maintenance worker in a gallery <coughs> because it was obviously completely indistinguishable from the ordinary objects in ordinary life. So I want to introduce a thought experiment here because when I'm describing these objects to you with the pretense of art you may rightfully become dismissive and you would be on firm ground to be. After all, any work of art that can be exchanged is essentially a commodity just like a vacuum cleaner or any other product. If you were to place anything outside on the street next to the trash, it might be seen as trash. If you put the Mona Lisa, the actual Mona Lisa, outside along garbage, it will almost certainly be thrown out. Those who see it will just assume it to be a print. It's a poster glued to a piece of wood, perhaps. The conditioning of mass production has undermined the sanctity of the object, the sacredness of the object, as something made by hand. So this thought experiment lays out a lot of the issues surrounding contemporary art and why it is so often too remote of a subject for educated people to really invest themselves in. Um, all art can now be confused with trash, even when it is made with the most delicate nuance of the most skilled craftsperson. Um, it can still be confused as something made by a machine and therefore cheap and easily substituted. So going back to our original definition, ultimately what makes sense of this thought experiment is that when we are talking about contemporary art, we are talking about luxury items for affluent people. That any object that is displayed on a wealthy person's wall 
automatically assumes value. It becomes extraordinary. The contemporary art object is arrived at from top to bottom. The patron does not commission a genius to make a unique version of a common theme. Rather, the institution and the art market designate the value of the art object and its status as a commodity. The artist is replaced with the curator, with a bureaucrat almost. The authority of the work of art originally depended on an aesthetic achievement, a coherence of craftsmanship, narrative depth, emotional depth. And now there are still many examples of contemporary art which are examples of great aesthetic achievements. There are still many artists who use a deep knowledge of craft in the execution of their work, but it's not necessary. Contemporary art comes in many different forms with many different motives and fashions at play. It has a dynamic of a forum, an exchange, and to a certain extent a battleground of ideas. The work of the painter Dan Cullen becomes very interesting from this perspective. In particular, his tar and feathered paintings. These are canvases that are simply tarred and feathered. The simple combination already comes with a meaning. The gesture of using tar and feathers is to punish and to shame. Using these materials for a painting brings them back into the scene of a public spectacle. Now, you could take whatever meaning you like from this, but don't lose sight of the fact that Dan Cullen, a painter, threw tar and feathers onto the walls of his affluent collectors, and he got paid handsomely for doing it. When we look at art as a kind of luxury item, we see that contemporary art functions in the same way as pre-modern art functions. It instantiates the status of the owner. It instantiates class. Yet here's an example of a blue-chip work of art, Dan Cullen. His pieces sell for tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, and they essentially mock and shame their owners. Uh, there is a self-repudiation, a nihilism. The status of a work of art is simply that status. It's about status and its lack of foundation. It's as if on a theoretical level the humanity sought to find meaning in the godless, meaningless world that modernity and the Enlightenment uncovered to us. And so intellectuals of the 20th century took refuge by looking at everything the same way as it relates to power. That every art object, excuse me, that every object, every human relation, every form of material can be seen through the eyepiece of power dynamics and hierarchy. And so the humanities rediscovered meaning in everything, this time as to see material in the context of power relations. Unfortunately, everything and anything can be seen through this myopic eyepiece. This is the underlying motive for a great deal of art criticism and discussion. It's not necessarily what I believe or value in art, but it is the way in which so much contemporary art is justified and how our culture has uh, is criticized. So before I finish up this video, I just want to contrast that with uh, pre-modern art. So let's imagine us before there was mass-produced imagery. Imagine seeing a painting by Ang being thrown out on the side of some early 19th century Parisian street. Everyone who catches this painting in their periphery, periphery will quickly understand that that object is not supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be alongside trash, that it's a work of art. And wherever that work of art goes, an art gallery is essentially created around it. The work of art holds the authority which determines it as a work of art. And this work of art instantiates the authority of the affluent person who owns it. It's bottom up, not top down. Moreover, the pre-modern work of art has an ornate frame, typically. The frame shares architectural features. The frame unites the paintings with the architecture. The painting is fit into the convention of society and social authority. I've made several videos on architecture comparing and contrasting pre-modern architecture from modern architecture, so I'm not going to go into depth into that right now. But I will say briefly that the architecture of pre-modern conventions highlighted the ideological headquarters, the church, the state, the temple. These major institutions were the architectural masterpieces, and everything else was subordinate to them. This schema instantiated the, the hierarchy of society. It also gave a sense of membership in society. It's as if everyone became framed within the parameters of the architecture, and were all part of an ordered painting in which our very nature and meaning is depicted. 
Contemporary art fills the interiors of affluent people's homes. The home itself stands in for the frame, and the work within them, the works within them, typically have no frame. Like these Dan Cullen paint, tar and feather paintings, they have no frame. The collection of an individual collector becomes an ensemble of artistic elements that are united within the frame and the singularity of the home that they are in. The unique architecture that we see in contemporary buildings are like individual works of art in themselves. That is why postmodern architecture is so incoherent. Each building reflects a different set of aesthetic values. These features of contemporary life reflect an individualist society with an eroded sense of common membership. That erosion of clearly understood common values is why we see so much nihilism in contemporary art.